Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. We are going through the entire book of Revelation. That's right, on YouTube, on YouTube of all places. Uh, every single week, we're taking on a different chapter. We are all the way up to Revelation chapter 10 right now. Of course, if this is where you wanna start, uh, you're more than welcome to read along with us today, or you can go back to the beginning and start over. Every single video is around 10 minutes or so, so we're keeping it nice and short. And I know it's difficult, I know it's difficult, don't give up, don't give up. I know we're getting to those parts, those chapters that are confusing and there's a lot of imagery and symbolism and these are some of the verses that are debated and talked about and people say it's this or it's this and we can get easily overwhelmed and confused and uh, feel like you know, that's it. I'm closing the book. I'm, I'm not going to finish. We, we should finish. We should, we should stick to this. Because if we, if we honestly believe that Jesus could come back at any time, right? If we say that, if we say, you know, Jesus could come back any day, any minute. Well, if we really believe that, then we should read this book. We should understand it, right? Because it's the same as saying... Um, any minute now, there's going to be an earthquake. Any minute now, there's going to be a monsoon. Any minute now, there's going to be a tidal wave. Any minute now, there's going to be a huge storm, and you should get ready. Well, what's one of the things that we do to get ready? We watch the news, right? We read, we study, we try to figure out, okay, when's it coming? What's the landfall? What's the speed? What's happened uh, in situations like this before? How do I best prepare? This is how we best prepare. We read this book, okay? Don't be afraid of it. We're just using our logic, right, and rational thought. We're just thinking, okay, what does this sound like rationally? What does this sound like logically? And just going from there. So where are we right now? Uh, John is in the throne room, right? This is where he's been. He's receiving a vision, a revelation of end times. He's seen Jesus. Jesus is holding the scroll, the deed to the earth in his hand. He's been popping off the seals. And every time he pops a seal off, a different angel and a different cataclysmic event happens, right? And so we're up to Revelation chapter 10. It says, Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven, wrapped in a cloud with a rainbow over his head, and his face was like the sun and his legs like pillars of fire. Okay, so earlier we had seven trumpets, seven angels. Now we have a new angel. Who is this? Well, let's think about it. When John described Jesus in the first chapters of Revelation, what did he say? He said his face was blinding like the sun. He said his legs like, were like bronze, right? So this seems like it's Jesus. It's the same description of face and legs. And he's wrapped in a cloud and there's a rainbow over his head. Well, who had the power to send the rainbow the first time? God, right? And God sent the rainbow as a promise to Noah. And the rainbow was a promise of God's mercy, right? He said, this is going to be a reminder to you that I am merciful and I will never destroy the inhabitants of the world again. So the Bible says, whenever you see the rainbow, remember this promise. Well, here's the rainbow. Verse 2 says he had a little scroll open in his hand. Jesus has had this scroll in his hand. He's been opening the scrolls, right? He said his right foot in the sea and his left foot on the land. So he's a giant, right? Jesus comes back as a giant and he's got the scroll of the earth in his hand, like the deed to the earth. He's got one foot in the ocean and one foot on dry land. And verse three, he calls out with a loud voice like a lion roaring, right? Even those first chapters of Genesis talked about Jesus's voice being loud. And he calls out, the seven thunders sounded, and when the seven thunders had sounded, I was about to write. But I heard a voice from heaven saying, seal up what the seven thunders have said and do not write it down. Do not write it down. So he tells us he was going to write it down, but then doesn't. He tells us he was going to tell us what was said and then says, well, I can't tell you. So I, I can't tell you. So what does that mean? Should we stop here and try to figure this out? No. Good news. You don't need to know, right? 
This is why this is why people don't like Revelation because there's all this mystery. There's all this symbolism. There's all these unknown things. But meh, just let it go. Let it go. Because it, it says right here that it's not for us to know. So if it's not for us to know, we don't need to worry about it. You know, if somebody's going to ask you and say, hey, which, which, which is a real troubling verse for you in the Bible? What's a verse you don't understand? You could say, eh, Revelation 10.3, and then move on, right? Just, okay, I don't get it. So, oh well. Verse 5, And the angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and what is in it, the earth and what is in it, and the sea and what is in it, and there would be no more delay. So there's an oath, right? Jesus swears. He has the seal and the uh, scroll in his hand, standing with one foot in the ocean, one foot in the continents, and he gives an oath. He swears on God's name. What does he swear? He says, no more delay. No more delay. This is the second coming. This is it. This is the end. You are waiting for the end. You're waiting for the end times. This is it. No more waiting. This is last call. This is final ticket. No more waiting, I promise. This is the end. Verse 7 says, But that in the days of the trumpet call to be sounded by the seventh angel, the mystery of God would be fulfilled, just as he announced to his servants the prophets. So this is what we expect would happen at the end, that prophecy would be fulfilled. And it says even the, the mystery, right? The mystery would be fulfilled. What does that mean? It means that even in the last days, even at the end of time, the mystery still exists. Even up to the last second before Jesus returns, there is still mystery. We can spend all of our days right now trying to figure out Revelation 10 verse 3, right? Or we can just let it go. We don't have to figure it out. We don't have to figure faith out. We don't have to figure God out. The Bible clearly says that the mystery will be with us until the last days. The unknown things will still be unknown, even in the end. When Jesus comes back, that's when things will be finished. When Jesus comes back, that's when things will be known. When that's when things will be fulfilled. Je Jesus says, you know, the mysteries of God will be there until the very last days. That, and so that's great news, right? It's great news because you don't go to church to learn about God. I know you think, well, I go to church so I can learn about God. That is not why you go to church. You go to church to worship God. That's why. Don't, don't walk away discouraged from a church service and say, well, I didn't learn anything. That pastor didn't teach me anything. That is not why you go to church. You, you didn't learn anything new? You, you know what you learned? <laughs> you learned that you went to church for the wrong reasons. We go to church to draw closer to God. We, draw, we go to church to, to draw near to a loving God. We go to church to give back to God. We go to church to serve God, serve others. We go to, to church to teach others, to pass on the things that we know. We don't go to church to learn about God. Church is not school. I know we call it Sunday school and Bible study. But church is about worship. Church is about worship. It's about drawing near to God and loving Him more. Don't worry about the things that you don't know. Love God and praise God and worship God for all the things that you do know. Love you guys. See you next time. Bye.